Hello and many thanks for joining us on this edition of the program. This is where we review, analyze and discuss issues in governance, politics, the economy, security, amongst many others, especially as they affect the people and their well-being. I am Imoni Amarere. It is another season of electioneering in Nigeria ahead of the next general elections bid for February and March 2023. In accordance with the timetable rolled out by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, the various political parties have already concluded their primaries for the nomination of candidates for the elections at every level and campaigns have effectively commenced. This also means that attention has shifted from the critical business of governance to politicking at every level. Now, for first-time state governors, attention has now shifted to getting re-elected, while most of their second-term colleagues are busy trying to get elected into Nigeria's foremost retirement home, the Senate. Some are also busy making last-minute borrowings of huge sums of money, supposedly for projects they either did not conceive or could not execute in over seven years in office as chief executives. On the other hand, lawmakers at state and federal levels who were lucky to pick the party tickets are now more focused on making it back to the legislative chambers, even when they may not have added any value in the last three or seven years of their presence in those chambers. For those who lost out in the party primaries, they have been jumping from one party to another in desperate attempts at grabbing platforms to return to Abuja or to their state capitals. So much so that some are employing threats of defection to blackmail their parties, particularly the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC. The consequence of all of this is that the primary constitutional responsibilities of these elected executives and representatives have been abandoned and the people left to hang hard and dry no serious governance appears to be taking place as politics and politicking takes the central stage between now and February 2023. How can politics and governance be properly balanced in the next 10 months until the next administrations take over? How can governments prioritize the welfare and well-being of their peoples over and above partisan political interests. Can governance be separated from politics? Now, what is the import of politicking for the quality of governance at every level? These are the issues we shall try to unravel on the program today. We shall get to meet our guests very shortly. But first, let's uh, bring to your attention that there is a big rush across the country and many parts of the country by Nigerians to get registered as voters. Now, this means that Nigerians are beginning to understand that their votes matter and that their votes count. But this voter registration exercise has been on for over 11 months. And suddenly, in the 11th hour, as it were, Nigerians are beginning to rush to the various registration centers to get registered as voters. Now, with just about 10 months to the elections, it appears that more and more Nigerians are getting enlightened about what to expect in 2023. But that process is supposed to end at the end of this month. But INEC has come out to say that it will hopefully be able to extend it by at least 
30 days. Just listen to Barrister Festus Okoye, who is the INEC National Commissioner in charge of voter education and information. We are going to extend this voter's registration process to make sure that every person who has an opportunity of registering gets to register. So, so, so you don't need to. No, you need to listen. This voter's registration started 11 months ago. 11 months. We started this voter's registration on the 28th day of June, 2021. That was when we started the online. And then in July, we started the physical registration. Sometimes we register a single individual here, one. But you know, you can't legislate on everything. You can't even legislate on the attitude of people. We have, we have this 11th hour syndrome. But I'm not relying on that. The point I'm making is that we had announced that this registration is going to close on the 30th. I'm assuring you that it's not going to close on the 30th. We are going to continue until we are sure that we have registered every person who shows up. So if you show up, we are going to register you. But let me say this. If you have ever registered before, if you have ever registered before and you register again, you are engaged in exercise in futility. Whatever you are doing is nonsense. Because when we carry these machines to our head office, we will see that you have registered before and we cancel your and we cancel your registration. If you have lost your PVC, please, when you get inside, tell them that you have lost your PVC. And then we will schedule you for a new PVC. Don't register again. If your PVC is defaced, we schedule you for a new one. Don't register again. If you want to do transfer, tell them that it's transfer you have come for. We will schedule you transfer you to a new pooling unit, to a new registration area, and then we give you a new PVC. If you register again, we will leave that old one and cancel the, the present one. Please. And for those of you, don't go there and think that because you answered Joseph previously and you want to answer Philip now, that we will see it. The moment you register again, when we do what we call deduplication, your face will appear twice and we'll cancel the, the fresh one. Please, let us be honest and let us be oddly. I commend your patience and I assure you that every person who wants to register will get an opportunity of registering. Whether you register today or we, whether you register tomorrow, we are going to make sure that we at least um, extend the registration period by at least the next 30 days to make sure that as many people as possible get to register. That was Barrister Festus Okoye, who is the National Commissioner in Charge of Information and Voter Education, now advising prospective voters, those who are rushing at this 11th hour to the various registration centers to take it easy uh, with the assurance that the exercise will be extended by at least 30 days. So there is no need for you to uh, fight to uh, protest at the various centers, just be calm and you will get registered. And if you have registered before, he says there is no need to do a second registration. Except of course you want to transfer your registration center from one place to another. And there is a process for doing that. All right. Now let's get back to the studio and to our focus today, which is Governance and politics. How is the politicking that is ongoing now beginning to affect the serious and constitutional business of governance at every level, from local governments to the state and to the federal levels? It appears that many uh, elected officials, uh, representatives at every level, have abandoned those responsibilities and they are now in pursuit of fresh tickets to return to their various offices or to new offices. And how is this supposed to play out? How is this playing out in the run-up to the 2023 general elections? I have with me in the studio two gentlemen and another gentleman joining us virtually uh, from Moscow. Uh, first, let's get to meet Mr. James Sagbama. Mr. Sagbama is an economist, is a retired assistant director of monetary policy 
uh, from the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria. Mr. Sagbama is also the CEO of Zix Security. Thank you so much for Thank joining you very us. Much. Also, right here with us in the studio is Professor Vitalis Urikeze Ajumbe. Professor Ajumbe is a former Commissioner for Information, Tourism, and Public Utilities in Imo State, Southeast Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining us, Prof. Thank you. And we are joined virtually via Zoom from Moscow by Professor Igo Natufe. Professor Natufe is a professor of political science and is currently a researcher at the Institute for African Studies at the Russian Academy of Sciences in Moscow, Russia. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Great. Uh, this is hoping that you are keeping pace with developments back home in Nigeria. Oh, yes, I'm trying my bit. That's right. So we, we are in good stead to look at developments here at home. Pardon? I said, so you are therefore in a very good stead to look at developments back home uh, here in Nigeria. Yes, yes. So let's begin by asking you what your reading of the uh, political tempo is in Nigeria at the moment. I can't hear you. Something is missing. I think there is some interference uh, on the line, but we we'll hope to get back to you very quickly, Prof. We're back here in the studio, uh, Professor Vitalis. Yes, Prof, we will get back to you in a moment. Very quickly, we'll get back to you. Yes. Professor Vitalis, politics is in the air, and what is going on at the moment, where some will say is expected. Uh, and that in an electionary year, yeah, you do not expect to see much of governance. Is that what it ought to be? Well, actually, it's not what it ought to be. But unfortunately, in Nigeria, uh, t things are done a different way. It, it, it goes to show that politicians in Nigeria don't have program of activities. Um, the person running for that position or who is trying to run again, uh, sh should have, um, uh, it's not when the governor leaves office and do his campaign, everything about governance will cease. That's why it is good to have, uh, to, it is good to de 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 delegate duties. You have your deputy governor who can, who, who can, who can if, uh, handle the matters when you are not around. Uh, if you're a senator, well, uh, when the senate is not in session, uh, you, well, they, they will give you time to do your uh, politicking. But when it's in session, you, 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 owe, you owe it as a duty to Nigerians and those who are elected to, to be at the Senate or to be at the National Assembly or to be at the State House of Assembly. But it's unfortunate that when you go to most states now, everything is down. When the, when the, when the governor is not at home, you will notice that nothing happens in that government house. It is unfortunate. That's the situation we find ourselves in Nigeria. In, indeed, uh, some of the governors who came into Abuja for their uh, party conventions, national party convention, only just returned to their various states uh, several weeks after the conventions. And uh, for that period... And for mm -hmm. that period, what is happening? Not, nothing is happening at the states. This is where every contract that is given out in the states, whether it is one, even if it is 1,000 naira, must pass through the, uh, the, the, the table of the governor. It is wrong. I was a commissioner in the state, in, in my state, and I knew what happened when I was a commissioner. That when the governor leaves or travels to Abuja or travels to wherever he wants to travel, everything will remain. It's like the government house is closed because they don't delegate duties. When the governor is not around, the deputy governor sh should be in charge. As, as we see at the Asorok, when the president is not around, the, the vice president is in charge. But at the state levels, the dep their deputy governors are not in charge. It is only the governor that is in charge. And when the governor is not there, everything will remain until the governor comes back. So it's unfortunate. 
it doesn't make for good go governance. What, what does that do to uh, the governance structure and the economies of such states, Mr. Sagbama? Well, it's a very big problem because um, if a state is without an authority who will conduct the affairs, that means that everything will go into paralysis and it will affect the programs and everything aimed up to achieve by that state. But the truth is that the, the king will never be out there. There must be somebody who should deputize. Even if the deputy is not there, the requirement is that pick somebody who is competent enough within, within that enclosure, other government, other the governors, or the deputy or anybody, who can stand in and do these aspects of governance until the governor comes back. But because of uh, political issues, some of these people don't want to let go so that they will not see what and what they have left behind. But well, what kind of political issues are you referring to? Yes, yeah, because they want to do everything to themselves. They want to have the secrets to themselves. In my days when I was in Central Bank, when the, 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 the one at the top was not there, the deputy was not there, I was asked to go to management to represent them. And I went to the board and I was there. And I spoke. On their behalf, when, I, when they came back, I reported to them. So that is just the truth. Once there is transparency, ah, there shouldn't be any failure. But when the transparency is not there, that was what I was trying to refer to. Hidden things and hiding here so that people don't know what exactly what I'm doing. When I come back, the only person that will continue, that, that is that it's not good for governance. Good governance means that you have to be open, transparent, transfer this responsibility to somebody else who can sit in for you. That person will do it and he reports back to you. And that's how it's done. All right, Professor Natufe, let's uh, come to you. Okay, from, from what we have seen and heard so far, it appears that there is uh, paralysis of governance in most states and even uh, at the federal level because uh, every politician, every government appointee, uh, every elected official uh, seems to be more interested in getting back to one office or the other. Now share with us, from your experience as a political scientist and one who has uh, interacted and uh, uh, studied uh, the politics of other uh, democracies around the world, whether this is what it ought to be and if it is not, uh, why uh, this is happening in Nigeria? Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Amerere. It's a pleasure being on this program again with you and to discuss such a topical question as governance and politics in Nigeria. I think um, basically we have gotten it wrong in Nigeria in the way we approach governance. When I say we, I take it as a collective we, royal. Those in power and those out of power. When we talk, when we talk about governance, we are referring to, to properties that allow the system to function properly to address the socio-economic and political challenges in the polity. A government is elected to provide good, effective, and efficient governance. So what do we mean then by governance? It's a process and systems by which government functions. And there are four basic index we have to look at in measuring the level of good governance. One is accountability. In a democracy, how accountable are the elected and appointed officials in Nigeria? 
To whom are they accountable? Are they accountable to the public, the population that elects them into office? Do we see that at any level, local, state, or federal? One of my colleagues on this panel talked about, he mentioned transparency. But what exactly do we mean by transparency? Does the public have any right to demand for information from government officials on how expenditures were made? Take the budget of any government in the country, local, state, or federal. I will start from my home state, Delta State, for example, where the government being in the Niger Delta receives 13% derivation. How many people in Delta State are aware of the total amount that the, that the state government receives monthly, and how many of them are aware on how this amount is spent? That's a big question we have to ask ourselves if we are trying to measure the level of governance. Again, participation. How many electorates in Nigeria participate in governance? Not just to cast your vote on election day, but to participate in the everyday activities of government to checkmate your legislators. And again, predictability. A democracy has to be predictable based on its constitution. How many times do we attempt to deviate from constitutional norms and other issues that concerns good governance? So these are the four cardinal points which we have to consider. And this gives rise to six subsidiary points. That is the voice of the people and their accountability, government effectiveness, political stability, and the absence of violence, regulatory quality, how does government regulate its policy, formulate its policy, implement its policies, and the rule of law? How do we measure the rule of law in Nigeria? And last but not the least, control of corruption. The extent to which public power is exercised for private gain what I will refer to as the privatization of public wealth. How do we check this in Nigeria? From the days of President Obasanjo when the AFCC was created, it instantly became a political tool of the president in power to victimize those in the opposition. And when you are in the opposition and you join the governing party, that is, you defect to the governing party, your sins are forgiven. EFCC no longer bothers you because you are now with the government. So you can see that governance from this critical angle of control of corruption is gravely bastardized. Now, I must preface this by giving a word of caution here. I am utterly critical of Nigeria because it's my home country. But if we look 
globally, we find that the USA, from where Nigeria seems to be borrowing its practices, is also a very corrupt political system. The USA is a rich country, very rich, with very rich people. At the same time, it's about one of the poorest countries on earth, given the way it treats its population, given the rise of poverty in a supposedly rich country. Talking about corruption, for example, When you compare USA and Nigeria, both are corrupt, extremely corrupt. What Prime Minister David Cameron once described Nigeria as fantastically corrupt. That also applies to the US. But the difference between US and Nigeria is this. The US, you can refer to it as a functional corrupt society as a legalized corrupt society in the sense that legislation have been passed to allow for lobbyists. And these lobbyists are billionaire corporations, individuals who use their wealth to influence legislation in the US by buying over House of Reps, representatives, or senators, offering them free access to golf, golf courses across the country, trips around the globe, and various other, especially the disguised committees to help politicians to raise funds. So it is structured, legalized, but that does not mean it is proper because it gives benefits to private individuals to control the realms of government in the USA. Now, in Nigeria, we don't have such legislation. I remember in 1983, the late at in Zeribe, when he was campaigning for a seat in the Senate, he said that he would challenge his opponents, Oporoko for Oporoko, Naira for Naira, and Dollar for Dollar. Unfortunately, if he were alive today, he would be amazed at the rate of corruption, if you go back to Asaba during the PDP governorship primaries election, and you return to Abuja where you are, looking at the PDP presidential primaries and the APC presidential primaries, these three centers or three events made a mess of Ato Inzeribe's conception of corruption. Naira for Naira, Okoroko for Okoroko, dollar for dollar. In Asaba and Abuja, politicians vying for offices, they no longer talk about dollars, I mean Naira. That has been degraded to the shithole, if you will. They don't talk about Okoroko for Okoroko. The talk was euro for euro, dollar oh, wow. for dollar, and pound for pound. And it was public, a public dis display of poor governance, of corruption, under the search light of the EFCC, and nobody was arrested. Mm. So. You will refer, I will refer to the Nigerian corrupt system as a dysfunctional corruption.
For a polity as backward as Nigeria, it seriously castigates those entrusted to govern the society. There is no talk about, for the past one year at least, there's been no talk about governance. Nobody cares. The population does not even understand what they should care about. All the fixation now is on how much they can get from politicians in this period of campaigning, which for the population is their time, quote unquote, to make some quick money. All right, Prof. Let, and let, let's let's are let's aware of it. Let, let's uh, let's take a, a very short break. Let's take a very short break, and when we return, we'll continue with our line of thoughts that uh, you have thrown up a lot of the issues that uh, my guests here in the studio are also very eager to contribute to. So let's go on the short break. We'll be back. All right, thank you so much for staying with us. Uh, right here in the studio, Professor uh, Ajumbe, some of the issues that have been thrown up by Professor Natufe. Uh, for instance, he says that we have gotten it wrong with the governance system, the governance structure in Nigeria. Uh, and, and he made reference to the, to the absence of strong institutions, rather like what you said earlier on, uh, and like what uh, Mr. Sagbama said, we seem to have strong individuals that have overpowered and overshadowed the institutions that should be running on their own, whether or not the individual is there. Yeah, um, the, the Kanka womb, there is corruption. And there's no institution you bring in this country now that will make things work. It, it, it is quite unfortunate quite unfortunate. If I had not been in government, uh, I, I would be, I'd be saying something different. But having been in government and saw how it operates from inside, I pity um, the populace. And the populace- You sound very pessimistic. Yeah, the populace also are the cause of all this. Yes, some, some people are now rushing. Uh, PVC, PVC, that permanent voters card. PVC, everybody is rushing for PVC. They are not rushing because they want to vote according to their conscience. They, they, finally, they have discovered that for you to vote on that voting day, you, you will be induced. You will be given money. Mo most of these people rushing for PVC are, are doing that to make money on that voting day. Uh, it has, uh, the, the bribery system in Nigeria has pass from Naira to dollar. That's what they share now. And that is why when, when you go to the bureau to change, you will not get dollar. But immediately after, after a party primary or convention, dollar will m move in. And after that, it will go back to the owners. They will, they will buy them back. It is quite unfortunate. And it is affecting the economy of this country, where everything we import are based on dollar, dollar rate. And it trickled down to even ordinary gari, a, a paint of gari, because I went to, I just decided to find out. When, when I heard I was coming to AI, I said, okay, let, let me do some market sampling. A paint of gari now is 1,200. When you ask them, they will say dollar. And I begin to wonder what dollar is doing with gari. That even the corn, the corn they sell on the road, the, the, the usual mat, uh, mat organ, which we enjoy during the rainy season. One stick is about 200, 150. When you ask them, you say dollar has, which means the, the, the main exchange rate in Nigeria today, is the main currency we use now is dollar to measure every other thing. Who caused that? Corrupt politicians. This, this is it. Now, how do we remove those corrupt politicians? Is it not by using our voter's card? M mark my word, today is 24th day of uh, 
June. On that day of National Assembly of Presidential Election, the dollar will flow. And those people who have that card will use it to get their own money. But if you say your conscience on that day, bear in mind that you have four years to go. That four years will affect your life, will affect your health, will affect everything that you do. People should have conscience to say, let me vote out this country. We, we know them. Do you, know, do you not say you don't know them? You know, we know them. Any, any governor that is ride, riding a, a bulletproof uh, SUV, bulletproof SUV as a private car, is corrupt because we know how much it costs. None, none is below 150 million. None is below 150 million. What is the salary of a governor? A, a year. Calculate it in a year, calculate it in four years. Cannot buy that car. We know them. We know what they do. But to educate Nigerians, to sensitize them on how to do away with these politicians may be difficult because of lack of job, because they, they know how to get us, the populace. They'll, they'll make sure that you don't have job, you don't have means of livelihood, hunger is catching you, and when they give you that money to induce you, you do what, what they want, want, want you to do for them. That is their problem. It's just like if you want to catch, if, if you take um, a, 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 a small fowl, remove the, the feathers, to throw it out. And, and that's through the code. You know, when, when you remove the withers, the feathers, the code will catch the fowl. And start throwing corn to that fowl. It will, that chick, it will come to, to throw it up to your feet. It come, and it will forget that you are the person. That has just that the, removed all the, the removed feathers. All the feathers. Mm. And it will stay there and you'll be giving him. That's, that's what they want us to do. It is difficult. Mm. to wipe out corruption in Nigeria. Mm. Well, uh, Professor Natufe describes Nigeria as a dysfunctional, corrupt system, Mr. Sagbama. Yes. Uh, and, and how that has progressively affected every sector of the Nigerian state. Well, let me trace it from the political angle first. But let me make a correction here. The the uh, Cameron that was cited to have said Nigeria is fantastically corrupt was a then prime minister of uh, Britain, UK, not US. Now, with that assertion, that have we changed? The indices we have have continued to show that we are still horribly corrupt. And like he said, I see it as a cancer. Corruption in Nigeria is a cancer. And the worst of it in recent times, we look at it, <laughs> it's at even a seat of high government, federal government. We hear figures that are not believable. Can this be true? Can this person really do it? Then the question is, where is corporate governance? In the midst of all this. The moment corruption is in every, any sector, corporate governance is threatened because Politicians don't look at systems, they don't look at processes, they don't look at procedures. They ignore all those things and go their own way. Figures are fixed and many things are done. If not, how can you ask yourself this question during the presidential primaries that you see so many unbelievable things that happen? Say, how? Are we human beings backbiting? backstabbing, betrayers, and so many other things that went on. And we were just looking and saying, wow, can this be for Nigeria? Or is it that uh, it's only in Nigeria that uh, bad politics is done? So in such a gamut of events, where will corporate governance be? Because corporate governance in this sense, these are systematic things that are set that you must follow. 
to have good governance. Whose responsibility is it to enforce or ensure corporate governance well, at every level? In every level, whoever is the chairman of the board. He has to put his feet down because the management is there. The, the, uh, the, um, the director of the board are there, but the chairman who is at the top there has to do that because they have to set up, uh, sometimes they set up uh, committees. What is that audit committee? So, so he, he, w w to bring it down to, uh, say, uh, governmental level, yes. it is responsibility of the president, it's the responsibility of the, of the governor, yes. and the responsibility of local government chairman That's right. to ensure and enforce corporate governance. governance. But if they are the ones who are in the first place violating the corporate governance code, how, how, do, we, how, how do we then go about that? That was why I said no respect no due diligence to all the procedures and systems of corporate governance because the people themselves who are supposed to enforce it are the ones doing it. So if they are the ones doing it, who are you? The smaller one, they say, okay, but you didn't write a memo for this thing now. <laughs> you are wasting your time. That's just the truth. At the end of the day, figures would be you know, decided upon and put in there. I look at, uh, from my state, uh, not only my state, so many forensic uh, audits that have been carried out in this country. What has been the outcome? Niger Data Development Commission. Forensic, so we're all clear. Let's see the outcome. Up to today, have we seen anything? Professor uh, Natufe, uh, <laughs> yes. You, you wanted to add something before I go to Professor Natufe. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yes, I wanted to now say that in that wise, um, good governance and uh, accountability where it requires accountability requires transparency and all those codes have been rendered useless and ineffective so the smaller ones now seeing the bigger one doing this they themselves too will start taking their own and it happened efcc went to the presidential primary i saw them i went around there uh, they were so much there and other uh, agencies uh, military agencies at the end of the day how many people there how many people have been prosecuted how many people have been investigated and but they were vote buying they were backstabbing and they were betrayers and so many things that went on and people collected this money but unfortunate for these people who collected this money how long will those money serve them okay how long you have destroyed your conscience but this money will not last more than two weeks, three weeks. You have finished the whole money. Mm. You come some, back to square one. Some of them have gone back to their various constituencies <laughs> to, to share the, to share the, the dollars booties. with their constituents. Mm. Professor Natufe, let me ask a very simple question. Yeah. Can good governance and politicking coexist side by side? Yes. Well, it's good possible. question. But before that, Okay. Let me respond to what my colleagues in the studio have just um, talked about. You know, it is in a mature political system, you will expect corrective measures to emanate from the top down. That is in a mature political system. But the Nigerian system is infertile. It's an infertile political system where you do not expect the oppressor to liberate itself from its oppressive rule. It is impossible to expect that. So what is missing in Nigeria is that conscious minority that will stimulate protest, active protest, compelling the government at each level to take corrective measures. You don't have to start from this federal, or I don't even want to call it the federal government. It is not a federal government. You don't want to start from the central government. You can start from the local level where you organize 
and you make sure that the local government chairman and his councillors or her councillors comply comply with the rules of governance accountability sustainability stability by organizing series of protests and demonstrations forcing the local government chairman and his or her councillors to disclose receipts and expenditures. If you can do that in, again, let me take my home state, Delta State, where there are 25 local government councils. If you can do that in three local governments, that's a huge success. And can Nigeria not emulate how corrupt leaders are treated, for example, like in China, through public execution? If you do that, you might get some positive results. Mm. So we should not expect the oppressor to liberate itself from its oppressive roots, as I said earlier on. The oppressed must be organized properly. OK. All right, Pro Professor. Uh, As it is today, we have two governments in Nigeria. One is the bandits, and one is Bukhari. The bandits, if they could direct their attention to the Buhari regime and eliminate them, then you will be solving the issue of corruption gradually. So for us to talk about governance and politics, you know, you cannot achieve good politics without a strong rock of governance institutions being established. OK. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Uh, let me come uh, to you as we round up our discussion, uh, mm -hmm. Professor Ajumbe. Uh, the coexistence of politics and good governance. He says that you cannot have good politics unless, of course, you have good governance. Yes. Um, well, we say we, uh, we have good governance and good politics without good system. The system we have in Nigeria is, 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 is destroyed. And there's nothing you will expect from this country, good governance you expect from this country that you will get. Yeah, my, my colleague did say something about local government, starting from local government. Has there been any, any, any lo local government election in Ni Nigeria? without the governor staying in his office to write the list of those he wants in every local, and then do a mockery of local government election, and the, the, the whole party will, will say uh, uh, 29 over 29 to one political party. And then the governor will stay in his office to, to control the, the local government. So tell me how governors will, will go to the grassroots. And in, in most cases, there, there won't be any even local government election at all. So that the, the governor will not have a whole, uh, will ha not have the, the, uh, the revenue of the local government to himself. Mm. Some, some governors have spent seven years yes. in office well, without, without, conducting without conducting local government. So but tell me, and if you go to every, any local government in Nigeria today, there's no, even the, the grasses at those local governments have not been caught because they don't have money. And, so, and some states have even appropriated the revenue sources of those local governments to states, mm. which is wrong. Now, but, but what, what Professor Natufi is saying, uh, Mr. Sagwama, yeah. is that the people should take it upon themselves to ensure that good governance structures are put in place, beginning from the local levels. Participation by the ordinary Nigerians. Well, it's a very difficult task <laughs> to go it that way. Because uh, one, enforcement, we are talking of enforcement mm -hmm. here. Um, 
they don't have that power. Look at the, the case of SARS. SARS came up, and many people thought it would have corrected so many things. But then there are so many individuals that went to participate in it, died for nothing. And up to today, I don't think uh, their families have been properly compensated. You know. What I believe is this. Um, politicking and uh, good, governance good governance can coexist. Yes, it can. That I agree. It now depends on the individuals. Who did you put there? There are some people who don't even know. Again, return to the individual and not to the institution. No, they, they because it's the individual that run the institution. If you put a chairman there who knows this thing very well, he understands the intricacies of these things. And then he's directing all the managing director he has at the management level, not at the board level. And then he understands he's directing, he puts his feet down when certain things are going wrong. He will redirect that, come, go and look at the status of the good corporate governance uh, codes. Look at, look at, look at. Some will now put uh, committees of audit to go and correct it. You know, some will now bring who are the officer concerned and then uh, uh, investigate the officer. Mm. So by the time you do that, it is the individual because we can't continue like this. We must, there are Nigerians who can do these things. I can decide to help to do it. All I need to do is just to maintain my name, my integrity. And do it. But the problem is that when you are doing it, others say, nah, it's a bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit too much. All right. Well, <laughs> gentlemen, thank is you that so much. Is that putting a block? Our time is up and we <laughs> must go. Uh, <laughs> Professor Vitalis Urikeze Ajumbe, former commissioner for information, Imo State, uh, was commissioner for information, tourism, and public utilities. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Mr. James Sagbama. As an economist, a retired assistant director of uh, monetary policy at the Central Bank of Nigeria and currently the CEO of Zix Security. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And very of much. course, Professor Igor Natufe. Professor Natufe joined us from Moscow in Russia. He is a political scientist and a researcher at the Institute for African Studies at the Russian Academy of Sciences. Thank you so much, Professor, for joining us from Moscow. You're welcome. My pleasure. All right. And to our viewers out there, we want to thank you for investing your time with us on the program today. Please join us again when we bring you a fresh edition of the program, People, Politics, and Power. Bye for now.